Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. It's fight week for Daniel Dubois, who faces Japan's Kyotaro Fujimoto this weekend at the Copper Box in London. The vacant WBC silver title will be on the line. And that's on the line because Dillian White had to give that up when he became the interim WBC champion. So no idea how it came to be on the line for this fight because this is not a high quality or a high caliber fight here. Kyotaro Fujimoto, who is currently 21 and 1, and don't be confused by that record, he's basically been fighting journeymen and former middleweights, lower tier guys in the past several years since his loss in 2012 to Solomon Hamono. He's really done nothing, and he's maintained rankings at different points, say with the WBO and now the WBA, he's ranked number 13 right now. But at this point in his career, he seemingly is looking for a payday because he hasn't been looking for real work real opposition and the last two guys that he fought was the same person a former middleweight Sutat Kalalek and previously he's fought other middleweights as well or guys who fought as low as middleweight but have blown up and obviously had fights with Fujimoto so yeah I don't give him much of a shot in this fight as you could probably guess but um, if Daniel Dubois is taken more than two or three rounds by Fujimoto I'll be shocked because Dubois should knock this guy out in about half a round. The biggest part of this fight could be knockdowns. I think what's going to happen right from the get-go, you're going to see Fujimoto looking a little bit timid here and probably not looking to engage and he'll be instantly in survival mode. And I would pick Dubois to be looking for the same sort of combination that he opened up Ebenezer Tete, which was the left hand to the body and then coming up with the right hand. I think that is going to be the money sort of combination that is going to absolutely wreck Kyotaru Fujimoto and I hope they have the paramedics on standby because this could end badly I don't actually think that you know this fight should have been made even though there's the ranking there for Fujimoto he's completely overmatched here and I'm not a fan of this matchmaking and I know a lot of people have been making comments that Dubois needs to be upping the opposition and I agree on that point but he can only face the guys that are in front of him this is an issue for his promoter Frank Warren and I guess with the WBC silver title on the line, you can say there is something here for Dubois to aim for, even though he should get past at Fujimoto easily enough. And if it's not a straight knockout, maybe it's um, the ref waves it off after a couple of heavy blows and Fujimoto is all over the place. But Fujimoto has landed in the UK. He is there, there at the open workout. Here are some photos. So you can see him here. Uh, also, this is another shot from when he was leaving Japan. You can see uh, his haircut here. He's got the Japanese flag. He may actually imprint that on the canvas when he goes down. And Fujimoto is doing what he should for an opponent that's trying to help sell this event. He is talking it up and has a little bit of bravado from him that has appeared on social media. I'm coming for you. But I expect as soon as the bell goes, this is going to be over early. It's not going to be a competitive fight. And I think a lot of people are going to be saying afterwards, why did we get this? And it's that what next for Daniel Dubois, because after this, he will be 14-0. I have no doubt about this. He would have to suffer like two broken legs and, you know, be completely immobilized to lose this fight. But after this, 2020 needs to be the year that he goes more through the levels because he's had five fights in 2019. He's been active but the competition has not really been at a point I think that a lot of people are happy with some of it has been pretty good and you consider the Nathan Gorman fight who was a highly talented prospect a guy generally regarded as a top 15 sort of prospect in the heavyweight division obliterated by Daniel Dubois who dominated him in the end not many people thought it would be such a one-way sort of street with that fight but apart from that, you've had Razvan Kajanu stopped him in a couple of rounds. Ebenezer Tete stopped him in a round. Richard Larty stopped him in a couple of rounds. Although that was a competitive fight for as long as it lasted with Larty coming out swinging and trying to actually uh, put it on Daniel Dubois. And we saw a little bit in that fight that I liked. His chin was checked and he was able to actually come back from, I would, I'd say, a minor piece of adversity because it wasn't all his going his way in that fight. But apart from the Gorman performance and maybe a smidge of the Lati performance, really how much did he get from this year? 
he's picked up all these belts along the way and they have this every belt saying but it's got to be about more than just picking up vacant straps because at the moment his profile is not booming in the way that you might expect it to the gorman performance because that was considered to be somewhere close to a 50 50 or at least a 60 40 in his favor something like that people really took note of that because that was a quality performance against a guy who was seen as a quality fighter the the rest of these guys overmatched it was never going to end well for them so this is what needs to happen in 2020 frank warren needs to pull out the checkbook and make sure daniel dubois is getting into some bigger and better fights that can actually build his profile and get him into a good position to fight for a world title because even though they've talked about potentially next year it's not going to happen I would say that he'll end up, uh, you know, working his way towards a WBO mandatory challenge or something like that. But the current mandatory is Alexander Usyk. So even if uh, Dubois is working his way towards that, he may not get a title shot uh, until 2021 uh, if he became the WBO mandatory. And there's lots of ifs, buts and maybes, but he's got some options because obviously he's uh, ranked elsewhere. And this uh, WBC silver title, which he's going to pick up, is going to force him higher up the WBC rankings. Currently, uh, as of fight week, he's number 16 in the WBC's top 40. So there's a lot of places where Daniel Dubois can go in his future but some of that is going to be dictated by what frank warren is putting in front of him and if there was a joe joyce fight in 2020 that would be a good fight i think that people would like to see that would tell us a lot more about daniel dubois there needs to be tougher opposition guys that can go rounds guys that can give him movement not just stiffs that are standing right in front of him there to be knocked over he needs to be tested he needs to be worked through the appropriate levels to give him some experience and seasoning to make sure that he's ready for when he truly is stepping up because a guy like Kyotaru Fujimoto doesn't do a lot for Dubois. Arguably, Ebenezer Tete and a few others didn't. But you can see with the Commonwealth title being on the line for the Tete fight, the WBC silver title, well, you can make some allowance and go, well, he's picking this up. It wasn't for nothing. But if these sort of um, belts weren't on the line, you really would be questioning, why are you doing this? And the fact that Kyotaru is so overmatched, people just aren't buying into these sorts of fights. I mean, I would be interested to know, are they going to sell this out? Is Daniel Dubois selling tickets on his name alone? You know, because the opposition, it's not really going to be sparking a lot of interest from fans. I think the undercard fighters probably do take a lot of the credit for a lot of the ticket sales in some of his fights. But I think Frank Warren needs to do better in 2020. Get some guys that we can go, yeah, this is a decent test. Kind of like how Joyce is fighting Marco Hook for the EBU. Marco Hook versus Daniel Dubois, if that had been a fight at this point, that would have been a good fight. Or Daniel Dubois versus Christian Hammer, something like that. The next tear up, guys that can actually give you something to think about and are not going to be laying down in half a round. But what do you make of it all? Drop a comment, loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.